Who? I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since. I don't know when. I'm stuck in the Here we are, State Wars Hockey Podcast, episode number 57, back home from beautiful Nashville, Tennessee, after the first annual Nasty Cup. I'm here with Greg Thompson, home base, Long Island, New York, State Wars Hockey Podcast. What's going on, Greg? Tim, it's nice to be home. You know, it's like one of those uh, those trips where it just I felt like it never ended. Right. You know, we had such a long weekend and just nice to hit home turf right when we landed. Um, I never really say that, but, uh, you know, it was just such a long, stressful roller coaster of a week for us. So uh, nice, nice to get home. How's it going? Uh, yeah, I'm with you. You know, obviously I was there right there with you. Um, yeah, roller coaster is a good word. You know, uh, I guess anything fun in life has its uh, peaks and valleys. So if, if things were easy, uh, everyone would be doing it. So, um, yeah, you know, it started out for those at home that don't know, you know, Greg and I got out there a week early last Monday, um, a week before the tournament almost. And, uh, you know, the rinks were just being built still. And we had laid the floors down. You know, they, they had purchased two brand new still mat floors. I helped arrange that with our partnership with still mat. And we agreed to go out there and install the floors for them. So uh, our buddy Taddeus from still mat in the Czech Republic actually flew out. So it was great to meet him. And, um, Greg, myself, and him led the uh, led the charge to lay down two rinks worth of tile, which for those that haven't done that, it's a tedious, long process. And there were a lot of good people there locally that helped out as well. And, you know, we got the floors down. And I can honestly say Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the first three days that we were there, don't think there was a cloud in the sky, GT. It was beautiful. Uh, weather was great. And, of course, like two crazy people, you know, we were checking the uh, – the forecast constantly and we saw a potential of uh, rain coming in for the weekend, which was driving us nuts. But, you know, everyone, I think I heard this saying 15 times when I was in Nashville that if you don't like the weather in Tennessee, wait 10 minutes. So <laughs> they kept saying it's going to change. Don't go by the weather. So um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were great. Thursday was great as well. And we did the finishing touches on the rinks. They actually asphalted the, the surrounding area of the rinks on Wednesday that's how last minute everything was going. You know, we were very close people, you know, we don't share all this with people during the, during the weeks coming up, but it was very close to this tournament not even happening because the rinks weren't going to be ready. And, and thankfully for a lot of good people who I'll thank them specifically in a little bit, things got done in time to have the tournament. But that Thursday we held our uh, blue versus white nasty cup all-star game, which was great. Uh, the mayor was out there. We had a, an amazing singer come out and sing, uh, Star Spangled Banner before the game, and um, it was a great hockey game. I was on the bench on one end, getting to watch it, and um, the weather was beautiful. All the players, a lot of pro guys, a lot of high-end double-A guys playing, they all came off the floor just saying, wow, like, when that rink is lit up, Greg, at night, Beauty. it's just gorgeous, you know, um, and we'll show some pictures, I'm sure, of the rink for those that weren't there, but it's probably the prettiest setting I've ever seen for a roller hockey game. So Thursday night finishes, all-star game. Everyone's in a good mood. Everyone goes down to Nashville that night, but we know some bad weather's coming in. And then, you know, Friday morning, we wake up, head out to the rink early. We have a 9 a.m. start. We get out there about 7 a.m., Greg, and the rink is just soaking wet, not from rain, but from condensation because it was so humid out. Um, we checked that the humidity levels were at like 93 94% at that point. And we learned a lot about humidity and dew point and a lot of different things that day. But we measured the temperature of the ground. The ground was at 47 degrees. The air was like 60 degrees. So unusual for a December day in Nashville to be 60 degrees and 90% humid. And the rinkers couldn't dry. We kept trying it. Uh, we pushed back games an hour, two hours, three hours. Finally, by about one o'clock, we just had to call it. The rinks, we dry a spot. And it would be wet and five minutes later, it was a real frustrating, um, you know, when you have no control of a situation, Greg, right. It's so frustrating. Like 
nothing you can do about it. Um, there was no equipment we could bring in. You know, there was a company that came in, a, a, a flood restoration group. Guy was amazing to talk to. And he basically said, you're fighting mother nature, nothing you could do. I could, you know, he, he offered to do something for us, but 130 fans out on the rank and it would cost about $8,000 to do all these things. But he said, honestly, I don't think it's going to work anyway. Yeah. So he said, if you believe in God, pray and, um, <laughs> and just hope that things get better. And that night a storm was coming in. So we canceled the games on Friday and pushed them towards a Saturday late, late start. Supposed to start at 9 a.m. We pushed it back to 11 a.m. Went back to the hotel. We reconfigured the schedule to make it work for the next two days. And um, after that uh, night, middle of the night, Greg, what time is about 3 a.m.? Our phones started going off, alarms for a tornado warning, tornado coming in. And it was thundering out bad at that point. And the rain was coming down. The winds were hard. And I got to be honest, I was a little nervous. Like, I didn't know this tornado warning, what we're supposed to do. Um, and then our buddy Pete Messina, who was at a hotel downtown, he had told us that his hotel, they got evacuated to the parking garage. And he was in a 25-floor hotel. And they evacuated everyone to the parking garage for this tornado. And our hotel hadn't done that. So I'm thinking, you know, what's going on here? Are we safe in this hotel even? And then my mind starts switching to the tournament saying, you know, like, Greg, we're, we're done. Like, just hands up. I give up. This tournament's not happening. And we fell asleep. Wake up about 6 a.m. the next morning. The weather looked terrible out. We drove to the rink. Got to the rink about 7.45. Games were starting at 11 now. And we see a few of the guys down at the rink already, Dave from the rink and Adam um, down at the rink already with the blowers. And they were saying the rink was drying. The blowers were working now. We looked, the humidity's down to 50% like we knew it would, but there was a ton of rainwater for that tornado. Somehow the rink didn't blow away, even though four of the temporary uh, tent locker rooms did. And there was debris everywhere, but the blowers were working and there was a ton of water on the floor. And we were able to, you know, thanks to Matt Lawrence, uh, I'll give a shout out here, Motime Lawn Maintenance at Motime Clarksville and website MotownClarksville.com. He lent us about seven of those heavy-duty landscaper backpack blowers, and those babies did the trick. You know, we had a bunch of guys out there helping. We blew off all the water, got it dry. There was one section that was pretty wet underneath. We had guys out there. We pulled up tile. We got underneath it and used a shop vac and cleaned it out. And by 12 o'clock that day, we were playing. And that was a great day. I mean, it was cold as, as heck out there, but that didn't matter at that point. We were playing, which a tornado, Greg, hit two miles from that rink. And I saw a picture sent to me of people at the rink who have family and friends nearby that lost everything, their homes, their cars, trees crashing into their house. And obviously we saw the devastation in some of the areas of Illinois and, and Kentucky and Tennessee. So the hockey really started thinking pretty minimal to me at that point, realizing what people are dealing with around the, uh, the country just to have a couple hockey games shortened or whatnot. But we got through it. Saturday was a great day. Like I said, it was cold. We were at the rink from 7.45 a.m. till 2.30 in the morning, straight out in the cold, dealing with it. But it was a great day. And Sunday came. It was foggy in the morning. We were it again. The sun came out. We had some frost dripping on the rink when the sun hit it. But other than that, games were great. And uh, I think Saturday and Sunday it was gorgeous. Yeah, I, I was definitely a little nervous when we woke up that morning with the fog. Um, you know, couldn't even see like two feet in front of you. You're getting texts from all different teams and players. Oh, you know, game's on today. What's going on? Um, and little do we know, like, we had no idea, you know. And then the game started great on Sunday. And then, of course, the sun kept, the sun started popping out, and the frost from the <laughs> from the roof started melting from the beams. Yeah, so we had a little delay there, um, but luckily, you know, it wasn't too bad. So, you know, we, we stayed on top of things, and <clears throat> we were out there with towels and a blower, and uh, we were good to go after probably an hour or so. So, wasn't wasn't too bad. I think I think I think overall teams were happy just to play. You know, and uh, obviously there were a lot of issues throughout the weekend with the weather, but, you know, we stayed strong and uh, moved right along. And there were so many people that helped us along the way uh, over the weekend. So uh, 
hats off to everyone. Yeah, I was pretty proud of our staff because honestly, I, I think most people might have given up on Friday. Um, we fought, you know, fighting Mother Nature is not easy, but there were a lot of people that put a lot of hard work in, not just you and I, oh, yeah. to get it done. And a lot of people put a lot of work in just to get to that point before the weekend. I mean, just to put in perspective, two weeks prior to the tournament, there were no boards and glass up, obviously no floors down. There was no asphalt. It was all dirt and rocks around the rinks. There um, was no electricity in yet. The scoreboards weren't up. Um, there, that was just a, a lot, basically, still. And, and, and that's why we had pushed back the date originally. You know, moving forward, and I haven't confirmed the exact date yet, but moving forward, this tournament's going to be held sometime between middle of October to early November in that time frame. So it'll probably warm up about 15 degrees or so and won't have that wind and cold coming in. And we won't have to run those fans for the humidity, um, which made it a lot colder. So it'll be a lot warmer next time, which will be great. And we, and we learned a lot. You know, it's our first time running an event like that outdoors. And, and the people that run the facility mm -hmm. learned a lot. And we've already had some emails back and forth. And they're already talking to the fan company. And they're talking to this one and that one. And and it's funny, it's just ironic. I saw a post today on Instagram of the Irvine rank in California that's outdoor with them canceling games today or yesterday and they pulling up the floor and drying underneath it. So it could happen anywhere. It's just bad luck. You know, it's like uh, booking tickets to an outdoor concert. It might have a thunderstorm that day. Like you never know what the weather is going to be. But thank God we were in Nashville and not in some uh, town that no one would want to be in. There were some teams I think they were happy that it was raining. So they go hang out in Nashville more. Um, but Absolutely. so many people put so much work in Greg to get to the point we were at to have the tournament. And so many people came so far to be there that that drove me, I know, and you and other people just to get through it. And Hey, the heck with mother nature mm -hmm. here. And I got to believe Greg, cause you know, I, I like to believe in stuff like this. You know, the last two times you and I were in Nashville, our buddy, Matt Koleski was with us and we had the trip with him two years in a row for tryouts. And as a lot of people know, he passed away this past summer and it was just his birthday the other day. And I got to believe that he was up there and he was pushing for us and helping to get us through the weekend. You know, oh, yeah. he may, he may have thrown that tornado at us just to stick it to us a little bit and, and mess with us a little bit. If I know Matt, um, and may make us sweat on Friday. Um, but he, uh, he definitely I think was with us on Saturday and Sunday. And I felt him there with us getting through that. Um, but I'm going to give a shout out to a couple of people here. And if I forgot anyone or, or some people who helped out whose names I didn't even know. So thank you to you too. But um, for the people locally in Nashville there. So um, Andy Gilly, Randy Hoffman, J.R. Ernst, uh, Jesse Enkenroth, uh, Dave Gilliam, uh, Adam Tucker, Red Emerson, Patrick Sylvester, uh, Matt Lawrence, I mentioned earlier, um, those guys all, were big parts of getting this together, whether they're board members or part of the program there in uh, HIHA. Greg's wearing the hat today. Hendersonville Inline Hockey Association. Amazing people to work with. Um, our staff, Rob Woods, you know, from uh, Roll of Dad News, a guy, Rob, with two Bs, who's got a brother and, and, and I think a sister named Rob. Uh, Jace Medina, Face Off Media, who did an awesome video uh, this week, and Greg's going to show one in a minute. Corey Borden, Tyler True, Denny DeGrip, uh, Scott Lieberman, Scott Kovac, Seth Hinton, and uh, Matt Tatarian, and all the scorekeepers. I know Chip Douglas, the rest, I don't know their names, but thank you to you guys. And uh, Scotty Sloan, Chad Siebel from Tour, Chris Hoysick, uh, Bruno Gomes, uh, Zahn, uh, Gilliardi. Uh, those guys right now were out on the rink on Sunday uh, morning, uh, Saturday morning, lifting up tile with us and, and helping us get through all that. And uh, Rob from the beta for standing out there in the cold and, and, uh, and slinging wheels all day. Um, I think Rob and, and the Levada boys were wearing their first uh, fur coats that weekend. So come from California, they're a little soft and not used to the cold, Greg. Yeah, also, Mike Francis was out there. Let me give yeah, Mike Francis too. Well. And uh, Adam Tucker, man, he was, he was so proactive all week, helping us out. What a great guy, man. You know, first time meeting him. Um, you know, local guy, and uh, he he wanted this tournament to happen so bad, just as much as us, and um, it really showed. 
you know, his poor wife was probably like, what are you doing? <laughs> going to this rink every minute helping these guys. But he, uh, he's all about it and uh, he just loves the sport. So, uh, so happy to meet him. And, his know, poor wife reached for a dish towel to dry the dishes at night. And they were none left because he was bringing them all down to the rink every day. Um, <laughs> no, you're right. Adam Tucker, if I had to give out an MVP award for the weekend, it goes to Adam Tucker. Yeah. Um, he was there first in the morning, blowing the floor, such a positive person, yep. um, drying stuff, bringing towels down, bringing down his own blowers back and forth every day. And he would help lay the tiles down with us and not asking for nothing other than to be able to skate. He was the first person ever to skate on that rink, Greg. So sure that's a big shout out for him there. When the floors were down, even before they were finished getting cut, he was down there skating. Um, and the guy that we, I, I nicknamed Indiana Jones there, Dave Gilliam. <laughs> Got to give him credit. That guy, if I've never, God forbid, in a plane crash on a deserted island, I want Dave on my plane. Um, that guy, he's it's teaching me how to make knots, Greg. Yeah. He's cutting he, those bleachers, those benches in the uh, on the benches, the yeah. actual benches. He made those himself while we're standing there. We're we're drying stuff, and he's cutting wood and screwing in. I mean, that's a talent far beyond what I got. And, uh, and I'm jealous of, uh, of the skill set that guy like him has, but he, he was amazing. I think he made those like within an hour. Yeah. That would have taken me six months to make one of oh those benches. Crazy. I had enough trouble, um, you know, just getting one tile out of the floor, let alone this guy is cutting benches. You know how, when you make knots, Greg, like I'm always a guy, you, I make a knot, I'm doing a shoelace knot, you know, he's Same. making, I don't remember what the knots were called that he was doing. But the kind I've seen my dad do with the guys that hang the Christmas tree on your car, they do those knots where you pull it and it only gets tighter as you pull it. I don't know, it's, I don't know what they're even called. Not a square knot. There's another name for it. He was showing me how to do it. And um, he's pretty incredible at the stuff he could do. And, and as president of that league, they're in great hands um, having him running the show. And then you got guys like Randy and JR who were the old guard there who are still heavily involved. And just great people and, and a big help. And, and they were getting their hands dirty too out with us yeah. every day and stuff. So uh, yeah. big shout out to all the, all the guys locally there at uh, IHOP. Also Red, Red as well. Um, I don't know if you mentioned him, but he was a huge yeah. help as well. Brenton fans doing all that good stuff. He, he, he logged a lot of miles at that rink too. So, ah, crazy. 100%. Very thankful know. for everyone though, um, helping out and um, getting, getting through the weekend. You know, and I, I had sent out an email to captains before the tournament to, hey, bear with us this first one. Like, there's going to be some bumps. Like, we knew it. There's going to be some bumps, but stick with us because this is going to be an annual tournament, and it's going to be more kick-ass than this year. This year was just getting through some stuff, um, but we're going to keep working on stuff. They're already looking into things about the rink of how to keep the rink drier or, or do little things to help and stuff. And by next year, the, the permanent locker rooms are going to be in the netting around the rink is going to be in, you know, there's going to be a lot of things different that are going to make it even better. Um, and it's such a, I loved now, now here's the one thing no one can argue, Greg playing on a still mat floor with the still mat puck. You can't even compare it to anything else in the sport. I don't care what anyone says. And this has nothing to do with a sponsorship or anything, because just for the record, I own three Mataflex floors that I have in storage that I'm not even using. Okay. Um, this floor with this puck, Travis Noe told me last year at State Wars after our Palma Pro game, he said, Tim, that floor and puck is a game changer. And it's true. Um, yeah. Playing on it there outside in the cold, didn't matter what the conditions were, skating on that floor the level of play, the grip, the speed on that floor and how that puck moves on it. It's apples and oranges to anything else. And my hat's off to still Matt because it's incredible. And I know on other floors, the puck may not work as well, which is kind of weird because it's, it is a little heavier and you got to get used to it, but it's still better than anything else. You just got to get used to it. And I know from talking to Taddeus from still Matt, who was with us that week, he said they're working on new pegs for a new puck coming out in 2022 that should make it even faster on all the other floors as well. They're developing right now that they're going to, we'll have them hopefully at a world championship and state wars this year. But even for an old guy like me, Greg, you see the difference and it's no different than we play ice hockey here, right? You play at certain rinks, the ice is better and your game elevates. 
that rink, that puck, kudos to Hi Hot because, you know, I helped orchestrate that there. They were going to go with a, a typical outdoor surface that you don't need under the roof that would be slipping everywhere. That rink, that puck, number one in my book. Yeah, I was so surprised even with the cold. You know, the pucks were still moving fine. Yeah, you know, some broke, especially as it got a little colder out. Um, I think PJ Tallow asked how many pucks um, got broken. What was, what was the broken puck count, he, he asked. But honestly, throughout the day, it was fine. It was those, those that late night that really – Yeah, a couple of cold ones. I'd say total maybe 10 pucks broke the whole tournament. Yeah. yeah. About 10. About 10. And I but, think any puck – I've seen ice hockey pucks break oh, yeah. outdoors. Like, yeah. it just – it's it was cold. Yeah. Any puck would have broken out there. Um, I, I see in indoor rinks all the time, even at skate safe and we're, we're in warm ups with breaking pucks yeah. on, on the crossbar. Um, but uh, wow, yeah. I mean, the service was just so tight. You know, that first night we played, it was just incredible. But, you know, the weather was perfect. The floor was brand new for the first time, uh, you know, team skating on it. Just so tight, puck moved well, and uh, just, just a perfect atmosphere. For that rank just loved it i remember one day on roll of that news they had something came up and maybe because we, we announced that, that still matt puck is the official puck of state wars and and people chimed in and oh we like this puck we like that puck we like a roll of tape whatever <laughs> and i didn't want to chime in on that then have arguments with people but i'm willing to bet that 99 percent of anyone that doesn't say that's the best puck on that surface just hasn't used it and hasn't skated on it and if you don't know you don't know yeah, they're not but those that know, know. If yeah. you were at if you were at Nasty Cup or at State Wars last summer and you use that floor, that puck, you know without a doubt that is the best combination. It's not even close. Yep. And, and I'm not just saying it. It's it's not even. I I talked to a bunch of people after the tournament that have never used it before, never played on it, and they were just like, "Wow." And then you talk to the pro guys, like I mentioned, Travis Snow, talking to Kyle Kramer, talking to Brandon Hawkins, Matt White, some of our guys. You know, talking to um, players in this term, PJ Towell just mentioned it there, talking to a lot of guys playing that weekend. It's just, it's a game changer. Pete Messina on our team hadn't used that puck ever, never skated on that surface before. You know, he's 30, what is he now, 37 years old, 35, 36 years old. You know, he's played for Team USA, he's played at a high level, played everywhere, done everything. And he was like, holy cow that floor and puck just makes me want to play again. Like it's yeah, just yeah. feel faster out there because nothing worse than playing on a rink and you're slipping out, you know, or the pucks bouncing everywhere. You can't control. That's why guys like ice hockey a lot of times, because you know what you're getting. It's going to be a solid surface. You're not going to be slipping all over. The puck's going to do what it's supposed to do. And I really feel that still mat puck and floor combo brings us closer to that ice hockey level of consistency in a game. Yeah, no, for sure. I definitely agree with that. And just felt even better out there, honestly, at this one. Just maybe because it was brand new. Um, just great. Great all around and uh, excited to see, you know, more rinks pull pull the snow map floor, hopefully, and uh, use the puck. Um, yeah, I see Nicolette Frank, Greg, who's an awesome female goalie who played men's there, too. She's yeah. been one of the best goalies, man or woman, in the whole tournament. She's awesome. And yeah, yeah. she just said best puck. And that's the other thing, talking to Alex Parisi, talking to some of the goalies. What I talked to Chinny about this last year from Black Ice. What the goalies love about the puck is they feel it. So some of the other pucks are so light, they hit off them, they have no idea where they're going, they make a save, and they're worried about where the next one's coming from. With this puck, you feel it a little bit more, you put it where you want a little bit more, and shooters like it because the same thing. They kind of feel like they can control it more where some of the other pucks just take off. You know, this one, I think it's a little bit more consistent in the gameplay. And again, if you use the same puck for 20 years, of course, it's going to feel different. You may not like it at first. We had that at the full invitation. Some guys like, oh, this puck. Trust me, guys. Use it. Give it a little bit. In time, you'll love it. But you just got to get, if you use anything for 20 years, something else is going to feel worse, no matter what it is. But trust us, it's the way to go. And as more and more ranks, you know, Veta Sports just bought now, Couple still mat floors. They're going to be bringing in a second rink as well. So we have Midwest Wars out there this uh, this April. They're going to have the still mat floor down there, and I know some other rinks around the country are also reaching out. So hopefully, you know, over the next five years, you see every rink in the country with the still mat floor down, and then of course using the still mat puck, and people will be more and more used to it. Yeah, totally. It's all about you know getting used 
used to the puck. Um, like you said, um, you know, everyone's used to the, you know, other, other pucks, rockets, IDS, Mach 1, whatever, and uh, haven't really used a still mat, you know, especially on a still mat floor. But once they do, yeah, it's a game changer. You know what's good too, Greg, is a puck can never be too fast, right? If it's fast, you just adjust to it. And, and eventually it's not too fast for you. You know, you can adjust. Yeah. Yeah. I remember back in my 20s playing in an ice tournament in Montreal and the first game, I couldn't believe how fast the ice was. And I was like, how the hell is ice faster? You know, <laughs> and you've heard about that. Some NHL arenas about faster ice. And I remember going to take a stick handle and the puck would fly off your stick and like, holy cow. But by the middle of the game, you're used to it. Like you, you adapt to it. But when a yeah. puck's slow or a puck's bouncing or rolling, that's hard to adjust to because it just takes away it lowers the standard. So the guys that are really, really skilled, they're not that much better than a guy who's just the average guy because they worry about the puck or the floor. This allows the game to play at a higher level. And hopefully that'll attract even more and more top players because some guys, the knock on roll hockey is it's slow or the puck bounces or rolls and it, they can't stop and all these things they can't grip. So hopefully, uh, like we said, game changer and we can get more and more uh, better players playing the game at a higher level with this combination. Yeah, so, I mentioned um, Face Off Media before, Jace Medina, Greg. He did some awesome video work during the tournament, some great picks. So he did a really cool recap video that I want to share with everyone at home. Um, for those that weren't there, um, just check this out. Tonight's kind of special because we've got some of the best players in the country here. So, uh, Tim, this is our mayor, Jamie Cleary. Got, you guys that are residents, you know, Mayor Cleary, uh, he wanted to welcome you guys tonight. So here's the deal you ought to know about. When you agreed to come here tonight, we also agreed to come back. So we're very glad to have you here to kick this off. This is awesome. Um, I'm going to stay for the face-off, and then I've got to get going. But I'll come back and watch all over the weekend. Like I said, you got to come back. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much for being here. And there you have it. 
Great recap by Jace Medina, Face Off Media. I'm not sure on some people's NMI and the music was jumping all over the place. So if that happened to you, make sure you go to our YouTube page or our Facebook page to check out the video yourself. And you can hear a little bit smoother, little Nashville music in there where they give it a, a really good feel. Good um, what's that? Good vibes, you know? Oh, 100%. It was, uh, you know, it was a great way. Um, to, to end the event with that, the, that little video there. And that beginning part you saw, that was from the All-Star Games. That was Andy Gilly, the head of Parks and Rec, who was a huge help getting this thing going. And the young lady next to him was one singing the national anthem. He brought the mayor out. It's funny, Greg, that night as we had the floors ready, I see this guy in jeans skating around on rollerblades with a stopper. And I was going to go out there and scream at him because I didn't want to mess it up the floor, dragging a stopper on it. <laughs> and little did I see later on that it's the mayor of Hendersonville. So I'm glad I didn't say anything to the poor guy. But uh, <laughs> thank you to him for coming out and having us as well. Um, you know, one thing I will say, Greg, and, and no matter what the weather was or not, I don't think there's a better city in the United States to go and have fun than Nashville. And I don't think there's a better street. You could say Bourbon Street. You can say Las Vegas Boulevard. You can tell me whatever street you want. Broadway in Nashville is the best street to have fun um, in the country. You know, there's nowhere else that you can just walk down a street and pop in places, no cover, have fun, one to the next, live music everywhere, any time of day, people having a good time. And um, that just, to me, is uh, by far the, the funnest place to go. And with COVID, we hadn't been there in the last couple of years, no tryouts, and it was one of our favorite places to go. So I, I was just so happy to be able to get down to, uh, to Broadway a bunch of times. Yeah, and different genres as well, you know, all different types of music, um, you know, going into it. I, I know some of the guys that were going from Long Island, like, oh, you know, we're not big country guys. I'm like, well, they play everything at the bars. They play everything. Oh, yeah. rock, you know, some uh, rap type acoustic things and country, you know, it's just a good mix and good vibes and um, just an overall, overall incredible city. Love it. I feel like we didn't hear much country. We spent so much time at that kid rock bar. It was probably where we were the most. And that was a lot of rock. And yeah. then we were at that one bar. The guy was playing um, Nirvana and everything the one night and uh, Foo Fighters. So I I didn't hear, I think we heard more rock music this trip than normal. Um, normally we hear a lot more uh, country, but a lot of the guys we were with want to hear a little more heavier stuff. So uh, we spent a lot of time at that Kid Rock bar, but that Jason Aldean bar. That, you know, a lot of those new places weren't there last time we were there, Greg. Yeah. And uh, twice we went to that Martin's place to have some barbecue. And people have been to Martin's. The uh, Greg suggested it. The brisket burger. It's a cheeseburger with brisket on top of it. So good. I, I'm trying to figure out a way I can door dash it here from there. Uh, that's how good it was. It was um, just awesome, awesome meal. And definitely check out Martin's. Yeah, we ate at some good spots. You know, Martin's. How about um, Luigi's Pizza? Yeah. We ate there a couple times. <laughs> um, wasn't ranked too high on the one bite app, but we enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. Um, and then uh, what was the place um, Randy Day took us? Uh, uh, Moby Dickies. Moby Dickies, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good too. Yeah, it was really cool. And uh, fish tacos. Little, yeah, good little spot. Yeah, no, definitely some good. That Sam's Club we went to the first time we were there. I mean, locally in Hendersonville, they have a lot of good places. That's the one thing too about Hendersonville. You know, you think, I think there's a lot of stereotypes. You think, oh, I'm going to Tennessee, a little town or whatever. There were more restaurants and places and stuff in Hendersonville. I mean, talk about a place. I mean, I, I'm not moving anytime soon, but I look at that place. I go, I could live here. Like that, there was so much going on in that community. And I think someone said it was number two and number three safest city in, in, in Tennessee. Uh, but just a beautiful area. Um, those parks. And you can just when you go in the stores and everything looks new to me, Greg, and clean and people are friendly. That hotel we stayed at, the Hampton Inn and Suites there, was just a beautiful hotel. You could have eaten off the floor in that place. Um, yeah, so, so people there really definitely take a lot of pride in their in their their uh, businesses and their and their buildings and keep things definitely clean. And uh, I, I just love that area. Let's talk about the tour bus. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Randy from from High Hop. Um, he was able to snatch a, a tour bus for the weekend for us just to kind of, you know, write emails and warm up a little bit, eat our, eat our dinner, eat our lunch. And uh, place that thing was sick. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw it. 
in the back parking lot, but uh, we were able to hang out in there for a little while, throw the TV on, um, warm up a little bit and head back out, but that was unreal. Yeah, I guess Nashville is a tour bus capital of the world. So um, I'd never been in one like that. I think it was a million and a half dollar tour bus, you know, four plasma TVs in there, a couple rooms, just chill and hang out. Uh, I think there were 12 bunk beds in that one. The guys to sleep and then couches to sleep on as well. A little kitchen, bathroom, shower. It was awesome. And yeah, and that, that, that Friday night, sorry, that Saturday night when we were freezing our butts off a little bit, it was nice to go in there and, um, yeah. you know, and, you know, with the coldness too, Greg, we kept those fans going the whole time. If anyone looked up the fan, it's called big ass fans. <laughs> and, it, and those fans definitely made it colder on the rink. Oh yeah. I was just so afraid to turn them off that were they keeping the rink dry? And, and I was like, I'm not messing with anything. I'm just, it's working now. After what we dealt with on Friday, we're not changing a thing. So um, we kept them going, but in a normal circumstance, we probably could keep those fans off and, you know, in warmer weather you want to keep them on, but we could have kept them off or a low, lower pace and it would definitely have cool warmed up things. You wouldn't have had that wind blowing on you. Um, at some points, parts of the day it was pretty windy in there, but yeah. What a cool thing. It felt like I was a kid again, playing outside under the lights. Yep. Um, it, was, it was a really cool, unique feel for roll hockey and already looking forward to the next one. I, I have a feeling there'll be so many people that didn't even go to this one dying to go the next time. So once we get new dates figured out and some improvements and stuff, we got a ways to go and a lot more tournaments to run. Luckily, indoor. Um, we got our Winter Wars West coming up end of February in California. We have Winter Wars East in Pennsylvania coming up next after the new year. So, uh, We'll look forward to a nasty cup too uh, next year. Yeah, and registration's up on the website for those tournaments as well. So if you want to get your teams in registered, don't hold back. Register now. Don't forget. Don't be locked out because uh, it tends to happen to a lot of teams. Hundred percent. Uh, let's talk about results here for the nasty cup. We'll start with our women's division, Greg. I was pretty excited that we had a four-team women's division, yep. and um, we even had a couple of the girls play in our all-star game on thursday night with the guys which was really awesome we we invited a couple more girls but with flights and people getting in the, the original plan was to have a couple girls on each team but they couldn't because they couldn't get in on time so next time we'll plan that more in advance but we had allison malty and uh ali louie come in each played on a team in that game but the women's division itself was a 14 division uh pamela beta golden knights team careless ringster og savs and the aztecs and here you can see the Palma La Beta Golden Knights with the victory. Um, great bunch of gals there. We got to see a bunch of them out that last night. Um, but they won three to two over Careless in the uh, the championship game, Greg. And uh, went to overtime. Nicole Giannino, um, former Long Islander, um, no biggie. Uh, she scored the winner. And it was in that video, actually. So I scored and do a little tumble salt afterwards. But uh, she scored a big goal there in overtime for the win over a, a tough team, careless team. And uh, that girl we mentioned earlier, Nicolette, uh, Frank, goaltender, for team careless, uh, made 21 saves in that game. Um, but uh, great game there. And uh, congrats to Palma with the first ever Nasty Cup uh, win. Sorry. That was a comeback win for them as well. You know, it was 2-1 careless. They tied it late and uh, won in overtime. So, That'll be an awesome game to watch. Good division overall, very competitive, and just honestly happy to see the, the women's play. You know, some tournaments we really can't get tournaments off the, uh, the division off the ground, but it's great to see them come to national. And the 55 and over division, uh, we had three teams there, the Empire Snipers, uh, the Blast, St. Louis Blast, and uh, 55 hole, basically a, a group of guys from Michigan with a couple others on the team. And uh, that was an interesting division. You know, they all played each other, Greg, and 55 hole hadn't won a game going into the playoffs. And as Coach uh, Coach Z, captain of the team, Dave Zaram, bottom left at number 77 with the plaid pants, he had said that it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And so true, you know, they, they everyone made the playoffs and they knocked off the blast in the semifinal. And then they played a pretty tough Empire Sniper team in the championship game, Snipers had won the first ever 55 over division at State Wars last year. And here they are now. Uh, they were undefeated. They go to the championship game. And in that game, 55 hole had jumped out on top, two zip. 
But then Snipers came back, and they tied it with a minute 26 left in the game. Joe Florio with a little chip shot. I think it was in that video as well, Greg. Mm-hmm. And um, then puck drops 20 seconds later, Johnny Smith, which uh, uh, with a pretty sweet snapshot um, over the shoulder of uh, Neil Walsh, the goaltender of uh, the Snipers, to win the game three to two. So, uh, again, not how you start, how you finish. And uh, the 55, 55 hole taking home the, uh, the tongue twister there, Greg. Um, taking home the first ever Nashley Cup win. Congrats to those guys with a, with an awesome win there. Yeah, like you said, it was a really competitive division. I mean, look at it, right? Uh, they were the last seed going into the playoffs, and they ended up yeah. taking it home. So uh, just some great hockey to watch. You know, even the Blast team, they, they didn't make the finals, but they were a real good team. You know, they had it's amazing. Of- like, you think 55 and over guys are going to be out there. They're going to be slow and just laughing and have fun, whatever. And, yeah, you know, obviously the level, that it's definitely a lot slower. But guys are whacking each other. Guys are yelling at each other. Guys are battling. You know, our buddy John Morato got tackled one time. I think Zaram got him and he fell and he nailed his face and his cage cut his nose and he was bleeding all over the rink. We had to go out there and clean up the rink. Um, so guys are taking it serious out there in 55 and over. Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of, a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming at the refs. <laughs> yeah. um, 100%. Yeah, oh. I was surprised to see that, honestly. No, nah, me too. Now let's go just jump over to 45 and over. So 45 and over, we had three teams as well. We had an issue with one of the Missouri teams back out last second. I think a bunch of guys had gotten injured or COVID, and that's what happens when you deal with these old divisions to get guys getting injured. Um, but we had the Pamela Beta Golden Knights here, and we had uh, the Empire Snipers, and we had Hi Ha H I H A Henderson in the, Henderson Inline Hockey Association threw a team together from the league, and they were pretty good too. Yeah, um, it was fun playing fun against them. Yeah, they 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 battled out there, and um, you know, pretty good games. You know, Snipers and Palm and Palm had a really good round robin game, two to one. They scored a shorthanded goal, wound up uh, winning the game for them in the round robin. Um, and uh, I played on the Sniper forty five team, and you know, we played them again in the championship, and they were just a little too deep for us. Um, you know, they got a good squad over there, and a bunch of guys have been playing together a long time, and uh, they know how to play the game. And, um, you know, Scotty Sloan, our goalie, played great all weekend. And um, they just got the better of us in that game and, uh, and wound up beating us uh, in the championship game 4-0. to zero. Well, Shut out, Tim. Yeah, shut out in that one. I, I don't think I scored a goal in that entire tournament. A um, bunch of apples, but no goals there. The puck. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a different puck. I would play in the puck. No, so, but uh, – now, good division there. Congrats to Palma and the boys. Great job with those guys. And then uh, 35 and over. Um, here we had a, a seven-team division and real competitive as well. And split the two. Top three went to the upper division. Bottom four went to the lower division. And in the upper group there, uh, no surprise really, it was a Snipers Car Shield championship game. And a uh, great battle back and forth. Car show that tied the game. Uh, Sean Sullivan played a hell of a game that game, as did their goaltender. Um, I just thought he was awesome in that game, Greg. Uh, Josh yeah. Hall, yeah, he played really well. Um, but a, a good back and forth game. And uh, and Zond uh, Goliardi, uh, or Sandy, or Shandy, or he's got 15 different names. Um, he scored the game winner for the Snipers uh, late in that game, a, a beautiful end to end rush to win it. And um, kudos to him for a great game there. And uh, Snipers wound up winning a uh, three to two, the double A um, championship. And then in the, uh, the single A bracket, like I said, they split into two. The championship game wound up being the NorCal inline Phoenix team. These guys are pretty good, Greg. You know, not, yeah. not a shot come from California. I didn't know a lot of these guys. They were pretty good. I mean, they beat the uh, St. Louis Karens uh, four to one in the uh, semifinal to meet up with the Tennessee Top Guns in uh, the championship game who knocked out the Reapers in, uh, I think it was overtime on a power play. Yeah. And uh, that game was a little back and forth watching those guys. And um, I know Tennessee scored the first one and then NorCal scored the next three and wound up winning uh, three to one over Tennessee. So congrats to the NorCal inline team. I like those uniforms. Yeah, uh, sweet. <clears throat> first yeah. ever, uh, that guy loves that green bucket. He didn't want to take it off of the picture there, Greg. Um, but, yeah, it's some bucket. 
Uh, guys are loving that bucket out there. He wasn't matching too too good with those gloves on. Either. <laughs> it's yeah. a Christmas time, Greg. Yeah, you got Higgs, Higgs bottom left, Brian Higney. Yeah. Shout out to Higgs. <laughs> Is that his girl next to him? Yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah. Um, so congrats to those guys. Again, first ever Nasty Cup winners right there. 35A, North Cal Phoenix. Or North, yeah, North Cal Phoenix they went by, right? Yep. North Cal inline Phoenix, sorry. And then we had a, a really big 18-team division, Senior A, Greg. Um, a lot of good teams in that one. And it's so hard with these tournaments, like how you rank teams. So basically just trying to throw, throw a bunch of teams in there and not try to have teams that play each other all the time play each other. But this team here, the Tidal Wave Jets, um, for some pretty uh, nice – I like those jerseys, really flashy. Stood out, out on that rink, obviously. Um, our buddy uh, Nick Widock was uh, – I hadn't seen him in a long time. He was the uh, the goaltender for those guys. They went on a nice run. And then in the playoffs there that day, they knocked out the Kraken 6-0. They knocked out Tour Country Puck 8-0, which might have been our first mercy of the entire weekend, Greg, yeah, that game. It was, yeah. And then they wound up facing off with uh, the Tour Mops from North Carolina. A lot of our buddies, a lot of guys who put years and years of state wars in the championship. And the Tour Mops getting there. They had knocked out Unify Tennessee Top Guns in a really good back and forth game. I watched that game four yeah. to three. They they beat the Gremlins, who are a good team. Tyler Sabota on the Gremlins, really good player, um, four to one. And then they met uh, the Jets, three to two, uh, loss in the championship game. And it was back and forth that game, went to overtime. And uh, Stephen White with the winning goal um, for the Tidal Wave Jets. So, congrats to those guys. I think Steve had a couple goals that game. And that was actually the first um, first game the Jets let up goals. If you go back and do your research there, Tim, I, I'm pretty sure that was um, the first game Nick let up goals. So, uh, Really? Yeah, great job. That's awesome to hear. I didn't even realize that. That's great stuff. Um, let me check that out here. So they were all shutouts up until that point. That's what I heard. Tidal Wave Jets? Yep. Let's see here. You're right. Zeros across the board. Congrats there. Nick Widock doing his thing there in front of uh, his uh, new beautiful little daughter I saw there. So uh, congrats to Nick. Uh, oh. Great job. Stephen White had a hat trick. Yep. I knew he had some goals that game. In the championship? Yep. Matt Lawrence just chimed in here. Uh, they must have had the stats when they had, they had Justin Mendoza down as his first goal there. But uh, you never know with scorekeepers. I, I, I just saw the Palma. The Palma Sniper Championship 45 and over game, the uh, the players they have down as a goal for Palma are all players on high Haas team. So um, <laughs> you never know. Problem teams get their rosters in late, Greg, right? Exactly. How many times you got to remind, if you had a dollar for every time you had to remind the team to get their RHA done, their waiver signed, or get their roster into you or their logo, how rich would you be at the end of the week, do you think? I mean, Retired. <laughs> I'd be on a beach right now, Tim. And then the senior double A was a really strong division. As rosters started coming in, we were going, wow, this is this division is really good. You know, um, when you got a team in the round robin that didn't win a game that tied two, and you see Garrett Ross, who in my opinion might be the best player in the entire tournament on that roster, just says how strong the division is. Um, but the Long Island Aces. Our boy Alex Parisi, self-proclaimed best smile in all championship picks. Um, <laughs> he played awesome, as he always does. We, we played with and against him many a times. And Greg coached him as a kid. I coached him a little bit as a kid. Um, great goalie. And uh, not a big shock seeing those guys in there. I know a lot of those names, you know, Tardino and Healy and Puglia and Johnson and Murphy. And just the list goes on and on with those guys. But they, uh, they got to the playoffs. They beat a tough Lizards team. That Lizards team, Greg, led by uh, Dylan Timmy, yep. they're pretty physical and they're a little nasty out there. They're hard to play against. They're intimidating for some of these teams. They play hard and fast, and um, they beat them 2-1 to one in a really tight first-round game. That was probably their toughest game of the tournament. And then they played a really good rink rack roof team in the semis, California, who had beat the Mars Blade Ripters, who was probably my pick to win the tournament. And yep. they beat them in the semis. And they beat the group six to one pretty handedly there. And then they met a really good car shield team in the championship game. Um, John Healy, I think, had all four goals for the championship. Um, 
and including the winner, I watched it with basically like second, uh, there's 29 seconds left. 20, I think, yeah. 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 And then he scored an empty netter. Um, yeah. And we've played with heels a ton, you know, you know, we think the world of heels, how good he is, but he, he sniped one with 29 seconds off top shelf. I was standing right behind the net watching it, but a uh, great game there and hats off to uh, the aces. You can tell those guys just love it, Greg, huh? Yeah. Honestly, this is probably a lot, you know, a lot of their first big wins, you know, um, a lot of them play locally and stuff. Don't really venture out to, to national tournaments and stuff like that. And just talking to them before the tournament, they're like, ah, you know, should we play single? A like they want to play single A because right. you know All right. they like to enjoy themselves a little bit off the rink as well. And I know a couple of guys, <laughs> I know one game they were missing guys because guys didn't want to leave the bar. Um, so they were just a little nervous on what you know what they were getting themselves into. But uh they uh they really stepped up and uh I, I know Dan Maxwell from the rink rack groove, he he was talking about him at the bar the last night. He's like, Oh wow, like those guys are good. I'm like, and I'm really happy for them because they work so hard and they actually deserve to win. And it's good to see another team win for once. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm proud of those guys and uh, I'll see a lot of them tonight, actually. <laughs> yeah. We got to get the aces to state wars this summer playing that double a division. They'll be, that's a real, as you know, it's another level at state wars, how strong that double yeah. a gets. And yeah. uh, I think those guys would be right in the mix for that division. For sure. They just um, got to decide which pro player they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny when you look at it, like that gang team from Pennsylvania, Greg, just says it all about this trip. They were there on Friday. Games got canceled that day. And then Saturday, they're not at their game. You're scrambling around. I'm on the other rink. Yeah. I check my phone. I get an email from them saying, hey, sorry, I don't think we're going to make the game with downtown. One guy's got all the equipment in his car. He doesn't want to leave downtown. We can't get a hold of him. We're not going to make it. And they wound up forfeiting both of their games. You know, paid in full. They're there. They decided they like Nashville and they didn't want to come back. And uh, so we had to scramble and change the schedule around a little bit, which, hey, it is what it is. But uh, just shows you a little bit about the power of Nashville. It's like that Vegas flu thing. <laughs> the Vegas flu. Yeah. I guess that's re really a thing. Um, yeah. No, it, it sucked scrambling around, you know, looking for a team to play uh, that game. But it, it all worked out in the end. Um, the Virginia Rattlers ended up playing. Um, that game so that worked out good suck not having them though they see yeah, the roster you know their logo everything they're all set yeah. and they didn't show up it's crazy it's funny i remember years ago we talked about this this weekend but i went to the vegas cup and this had to be well you were there too greg it had to be geez it might have been 10 years ago at this point yeah and we had 12 skaters our first game <clears throat> And it was me, it was you, it was Pete Messina, it was Rob Shear, Pete Penicky, Scotty Labeda, Darren Goodwin, um, and a few others. And by the time our playoff game came, we luckily got there with four guys. We played the championship game, a playoff game with four guys. We lost in overtime to a revision team from California, I remember. But guys didn't want to go back. We couldn't even get guys to go. And we just went just to make sure we – we had a team on the floor, but we went from 12 skaters game one to four for this playoff game, purely just because it was Vegas and the, and the power of Vegas. And that's the thing about Nashville too. You got to be able to control yourself a little bit, make sure you're ready for hockey the next day. And that's why the original plan was not to start too early, not to go too late. You know, we had to adjust things, but uh, again, moving forward in the future, that'd be the plan again. And hopefully be done by eight, nine o'clock on Friday, Saturday night. So guys can enjoy themselves. And I think a lot of guys will come in on that Thursday now, Greg, and make sure they can enjoy themselves all day Thursday. Yeah. We'll stay over till Monday um, and really enjoy themselves knowing now how fun that town is. Hey, luckily, the bars close at like three o'clock. You know, they're not. If they do, I don't know they even close. <laughs> yeah, some of them do. Um, but back to Vegas, I remember we, we left the club. It was like, you know, 5 30 in the morning, six o'clock, and we had to go right to the game and take an yep. Uber taxi back then to, to the game. So. That was, yeah, that was a fun one. We you made it. Vegas is, Greg? I feel like when you're in Vegas, like when you go yeah. out for the night to say, all right, we're going to go to the club at Caesars, you're in for the night. Like that's your spot. You get dropped off, you take an Uber or whatever. You pay your $40 or whatever to get in. You spend a ton of money in the bar on bottles or whatever you're doing. And then you're there all night, you know. Um, this is more, you can't bar hop in Vegas, you know, in uh, Nashville. 
That's what makes it really fun for the adults is they can just go spot to spot and just walk up and down the strip, get yourself the Broadway, and then you're good for the night. And you right. can technically go to 10 different spots if you want to and see 10 different bands. Um, you know, we didn't announce it officially yet, but the plan is we're going to be back in Nashville Memorial Day weekend for our Southeast Wars, which will be a lot of youth divisions. And we'll have a couple of adult divisions, but mainly more of a youth tournament at that point um, for the Southeast Wars. The Nashley Cup is going to be more about being the adults only and do certain things. We can have fun with the adults, but uh, we'll be back out there Memorial Day weekend for uh, for the kids. Yeah, looking forward to that. Then a month later, we'll be back, Tim. After yeah. that. I'll have to buy some property out there, Greg. <laughs> oh, Hendersonville, a little, maybe get a tour bus. You can just park <laughs> in someone's garage. Yeah, we'll have to take that tour bus, maybe. Tour bus would be nice. So that's our recap there for all the divisions. Uh, congrats again to all the winners and congrats to the team just for competing out there. Um, and you know, dealing, dealing with the weather and dealing with us and just uh, thanks for the patience, everyone. You know, it was, it was a tough all around for everyone and thanks for hanging in there with us. All those changes and stuff. And I see Nicolette mentioned the Virginia Rattlers, awesome guys. So thank you to Nicolette. She filled in a hole. So the Rattlers last minute, their goalie got injured or whatever, couldn't come. Yeah. Chip Douglas filled in, or he was going to fill in the first game for them Friday morning, was canceled. So thanks to Chip for offering. But Nicolette got there and, and played with them the rest of the way. So always a thank you for helping out there. And, uh, you know, and I mentioned uh, Leaves before, but thank you to him. He drove home. So once we realized that Scott was driving back to Long Island, we, we bombarded this poor guy before he's leaving the rink. And we gave him uh, about 12 boxes of pucks, all our banners. A bunch of uh, things we brought flew uh, flew there to Vegas that we didn't have to ship home, and uh, he traveled back with all our stuff for us, Greg. So, uh, big shout out to Scotty Beans for doing that for us. And uh, now we got a huge stock of the pucks back in, so uh, we'll be promoting that here. So, guys that want to get some pucks can let us know. We could get pucks out. Um, we got a huge supply in now. They sent in about two thousand pucks for us here uh, to start distributing them out. I know a lot of guys bought them out at the tournament. Um, but guys looking to get them, we'll send some email blasts out about how to get those. Um, makes a great stocking stuffer, right? Exactly. And if you did uh, <laughs> order pucks last week while we were away, they were shipped out as well. So uh, keep an eye on those. Awesome. All right, JT, what do you got planned for the holidays? Uh, you, know, you got a little one at home now, and uh, not that she really knows what's going on, but, uh, you know, it's got to be fun with that. And uh, you got any big plans coming up? No big plans, Tim. You know, just seeing the family, hanging out, relaxing, uh, regrouping a little bit, and uh, yeah, enjoying the holiday with the little one. You know, last last year was actually technically our first. She was a couple months old, but honestly, you know, I obviously had no, no idea what was going on. But um, I'm thinking the same thing this year. She really won't know what's going on. She'll probably play with, play with the paper in the boxes, and that wouldn't buy her anything then. <laughs> and uh, we actually so told, she didn't like Santa too much. I, yeah, I was going to say that, that. I, yeah. <laughs> We took it to Santa at the mall the other day. Biggest rip off of my life. It, you know, we're thinking, oh, you just buy one picture, you know, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, whatever it is, 15 bucks. Get there, go online. They don't give you any info. And she was great. She's walking around the mall. First time in the mall. First time for us in the mall in years. We haven't been in the mall in the longest time. But uh, get up to the line, give her to Santa, and she was bawling. She was not having it. They're trying to give her toys to play with, you know, and she's throwing them on the ground, just making a scene. It, it was actually pretty cute, but uh, get online, get back online. <clears throat> the cheapest, the cheapest um, uh, package package was 50 bucks, 50 bucks for a package. And it was all the same picture of her crying. <laughs> you know, and uh, it was actually a, a place near us that has a, a really good Santa at a, at a little uh, farm and uh, it's free just donation whatever and uh we missed out on that last weekend two weeks ago was, was the last time they they had them so next year we're gonna have to shoot for that one so you didn't pull like to do some people do at state wars you didn't uh take a picture of the picture and just uh, have a big <laughs> proof across it and put it on your facebook yeah. page yeah no no I, they weren't having it there i didn't want mall security after me <laughs> <laughs> what uh what's going on with you in the holidays what do you guys have, have, have yeah, on just that? you know you know how it is you got kids there's a lot of running around a lot luckily uh the missus does most of the the shopping stuff and everything and just gearing up for it and uh you know 
it's always a fun time of year with the kids and everything. So, uh, you know, just uh, looking forward to uh, some downtime and seeing family and stuff. And, you know, hopefully not too much snow in our area. It's been still pretty nice out here. So uh, yeah, 60 today. Yeah. Hoping I don't have to get the snowblower out too much this winter. So, yeah, exactly. I, I still have to do a little Christmas shopping. Just a little bit. Majority okay. of it's done. I have to get the little things now. You know, All right. Stocking stuffers and stuff. Remember, you gave the big gift this year. You gave the you gave the ring. So I think uh, I think you should be covered for most of it. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually checked out uh, Drakewood when we were there as well. So that was that was yeah. pretty cool. So uh, yeah, that's all I got today, Tim. All right. Well, great stuff. We, we we thank everybody again at home for coming out. The one the, those were out there in Nashville and Hendersonville for the Nasty Cup. We thank you for being out there, and uh, you know. We thank you for bearing with us as we work through some kinks and stuff and some other nature, but we promise it'll only get bigger and better from here. And again, a big shout out to everyone I mentioned earlier for their help. While we we're out there, you guys were all godsend helping out with everyone. And like they say, it takes a village, Greg. And we definitely had a lot of people um, who made things happen. We were just spokes on the wheel of a lot of people um, helping us out to make it work and make it happen. And, um, you know, looking forward to the next one and, you know, we're looking forward in general to uh, the next tournament. Like we mentioned, Winter Wars East and Winter Wars West. Winter Wars West, February 25th to 27th. It's going to be held in Corona and Irvine. It'll probably be the youth divisions at Corona and all the adults, maybe some older youth teams at Irvine. And then two weeks, uh, three weeks later, excuse me, March 18th to 20th, our Winter Wars East tournament. There we're going to have our youth at Marple. And first time ever, we're going to have our adult divisions at the 422 Sportsplex as uh, sport, uh, the regular Feasterville Sportsplex rink had closed down. So we'll be at 422 for the first time. Excited to be there with a, a new partner. And we had also booked April 29th to May 1st. Midwest Wars is going to be held in St. Louis this year. Um, All-American and Veta Sports. And like I mentioned earlier, Memorial Day weekend, we're going to be back in Nashville mm -hmm. for our Southeast War. So uh, a great, great group of tournaments coming up. And like Greg had mentioned at one point, most of these tournaments do sell out pretty quick. So once you do decide you want to come, I would definitely suggest getting registered, getting on there and getting your spot filled because uh, luckily for us, our, our tournaments do fill up pretty quickly. So uh, thanks everybody for their support. And uh, regarding Stillman and the pucks and all that, we'll send out some email blasts. If anyone has any questions or interest or anything about that, you could always shoot, uh, shoot us an email um, or a message, and, uh, and we get back to you about that. All right. So uh, everyone have a happy holiday and um, Merry Christmas for those that celebrate it. And um, probably even a Happy New Year. I don't think we'll talk to you guys on here before then. But uh, we thank everybody for helping make uh, State Wars hockey uh, the leader in the sport. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at a, at a rink soon. Yeah, happy holidays, guys. Thank you. Thanks for a great 2021. Just to watch him die. When I hear that whistle blow, I hang.